Hello everyone, it's me Pratima and this is the all new Nothing Phone 2, the successor of the Nothing Phone 1 which was without a doubt the most hyped smartphone of 2022. For the most part, I think it lived up to the hype pretty well. It was not a value champ or anything but it was a refreshingly unique mid-range phone in the market. And this year's Nothing Phone 2 brings a faster performance to better display, more consistent cameras and longer battery life. But as expected, all these improvements come at a price jump. While the Nothing Phone 1 started at 33,000 rupees in India, the Phone 2 starts at 45,000 rupees instead. And after testing it out for about a week now, I think this phone is a pretty solid semi-flagship device that's a lot more capable and a lot more refined than last year's Nothing Phone 1. Right off the bat, the Phone 2 does not look all that different to the Phone 1. It's now slightly taller, wider and bulkier than before. But I am glad that the Phone 2 still has that boxy finish with flat frames that feels quite premium in my hands. It's also IP54 rated now versus Phone 1's IP53 protection. You also get a slightly curved glass back this time which helps with a better hands-on feel. Um, it also has a remarkably better weight distribution but since it's a big phone, it's not convenient to use with one hand. Nothing also did something in terms of tuning the LED strips as the Phone 2's glyph interface looks an awful lot better with very little yellowish tint around the borders. Other than that, the actual layout of the Glyph interface is also somewhat different now as you can see. Nothing also says the Phone 2 has 33 individually addressable LED lighting zones compared to just 12 on the Nothing Phone 1 for even finer control and customization. And yep, these updates do a good job of making the Glyph interface more than just a gimmick. From visualizing timer to volume levels, the Phone 2's Glyph interface can even act as a progress bar for some third-party apps like Uber and Zomato. There's also a new feature called Essential Notifications, which I was actually quite eager to check out, where the top right LED strip lights up when you receive notifications from selected apps and it stays on until you read or dismiss them. At least that is how it's supposed to work, but for some reason, the notification light turns off as soon as I unlock the phone. Does not matter if I read the notification or not. So I hope nothing is working on a fix as we speak. In the middle of all these practical features, you also get a new party trick called Glyph Composer which lets you create custom ringtones based on different lighting patterns and sound designs. So yeah, I really like how Nothing is trying to unlock unique ways to personalize the phone but this is one of those things I find cool at first and forget about it after a few days. Anyway, like the design, the Phone 2's display gets a bunch of useful upgrades too. It's a slightly larger 6.7 inches OLED panel with marginally thinner bezels on all four sides but what I am the most thankful for is definitely its 1000 nits of full screen brightness versus 700 nits on the Phone 1. As a result, I'm happy to report that the Phone 2 gets plenty bright even under the harsh sun and can get really dim while using it at night time too. Another thing I'm quite fond of about this screen is its color reproduction itself. Nothing has not gone overboard with excessive saturation levels here and this subtle close to natural color science looks fantastic. Its refresh rate optimization is also incredible. Instead of just switching between 60, 90 and 120 hertz like before, Nothing has used a proper LTPO backplane this time which means that it can go as low as 1 hertz to save power. Other than this, Nothing Phone 2 is also Wide One L1 and HDR10 Plus certified but HDR playback on OTT platforms like Netflix is a no-show here. I honestly did not think it is getting Netflix HDR certification though since the streaming giant apparently only enables HDR playback on devices that pre-install the Netflix app which is not the case with Nothing Phones. What's weirder is that the Phone 2 even fails to properly stream my local and even YouTube Asia videos. Now this is something easily fixable with an update or two so I am not too worried. 
but I am having a major deja vu listening to its stereo speakers because nothing has still not shipped a good audio setup in here. It does not sound too bad when playing podcasts or acoustic music, but as soon as there's anything with a lot of instruments and dynamics, the phone too breaks down, loses clarity, and sounds a little distorted. Okay, another thing nothing could have done better here is the placement of the fingerprint sensor as it's a bit too low to my liking. However, its haptics are pretty great and I found the vibration feedback to be a little more crisp and precise compared to the Nothing Phone 1. Alright, now let's talk about the performance and this is where you'd find the biggest upgrade on the phone too. The Snapdragon 778G Plus was a decent processor for the Phone 1 but the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip here finally offers a flagship-like smartphone experience. It is a slightly underclocked version of the A Plus Gen 1, like what we saw on the OnePlus 11R, but I found no major performance hiccup because of this. The 8 Plus Gen 1 is Qualcomm's second best chipset right now and nothing has done a phenomenal job of optimizing its software to play nice here. Everything just works effortlessly. The system animations are fluid and logical while apps load quickly, they feel responsive and memory management is done super in here. I think right at the moment, the Nothing OS 2.0 on this phone is one of the most stable Android skins I've ever used. And with the promise of three major OS and four years of security updates, it's going to be interesting to see how the company makes Nothing OS even better. But although you get a solid everyday performance here, gaming is where it still has some work to do. For example, when playing Genshin Impact at the highest settings, I was getting around 55 FPS on average for the first 5-6 minutes or so, which would quickly go down to 45 FPS as the phone starts throttling because of the heat. Comparing it with OnePlus 11R, this is a pretty mediocre result, I have to say. However, in other games I tested like PUBG Mobile, Ash Path 9 and Injustice 2, it resulted in fairly stable 60fps gameplay in the highest settings. Okay, I remember how I was thoroughly impressed with the Phone 1 in the camera department and this year too, I believe they have done a fantastic job, minus some optimization issues here and there. This time, Nothing has tried a different kind of image tuning, like punchy colors that we usually associate with Samsung phones and a somewhat contrasty processing you typically expect from an iPhone. And overall, this new and improved 50 megapixel IMX 890 sensor takes great photos in ample lighting conditions with good colors, details, and a nice dynamic range. I also briefly compared it with the Pixel 7a and found the Phone 2 to be competing pretty well. It does not struggle to lock focus on close-up subjects like Pixel, but in relatively challenging conditions, Google's computational photography simply takes the lead. I am actually coming up with a separate video comparing these two phones, so if you are interested in watching that video, do consider subscribing to our channel. Anyway, talking about the ultra wide angle camera, I am not seeing that level of consistency here versus the primary shots, but it is definitely better than the average 8 or 12 megapixel lens that we usually get on other phones at similar price brackets. In fact, I have noticed a definite improvement in detail and dynamic range compared to the Phone 1. This ultra wide angle camera also has autofocus and it allows you to take decent macro shots too. Now, as the sun goes down, its low light photography gets a chance to shine as well. There's not much noise, the photos look sharp, they have a slightly warmer hue in general, but I'd say this actually complements the overall shot. However, under decent lighting situations during the night, sometimes it struggles to maintain exposure unless night mode shows up by default. Here, Nothing is not offering a dedicated night mode but unlike other Android phones, so shooting during the night at times could be quite tricky with the Nothing phone too. You only have auto night mode which kicks in sometimes while the other times it does not. I had the same issue with the Phone 1, so seeing that it's still not fixed is a bummer. When it comes to portraits, I was hoping the Phone 2 would come with a telephoto lens or at the very least a 2x mode, but neither of my wishes came true. 
Still, it takes decent portrait shots with a slightly brighter skin tone that most people may prefer. The selfie camera has also been upgraded to a 32 megapixel sensor this time, and I love how natural the skin tone looks and the photos are not over sharpened either. It's HDR processing sometimes, it's not the best against an overexposed background, but overall this selfie camera is top class. The Nothing Phone 2 comes with improved video capabilities too. You can now shoot at up to 4K 60fps from both the wide and ultra wide angle camera and although the footages are a bit contrasty like the photos and have some cropping going on, but overall they're steady enough. Another thing I like is that the camera app lets you switch between two cameras in 4K 30fps as you're recording. This was only possible on a flagship phone, so that is nice to see here. Similarly, if you want the most stable footages, there's also the new action mode which mixes both OIS and EIS to bring the most stable output. But it's only available for the primary camera and is limited to 1080p 60fps only. Okay, selfie videos are maxed out at 1080p 60fps, but even so, the quality of the videos is really good, I have to say. The skin tone looks really nice and uh, it's detailed as well. Uh, I wish the field of view could have been a little better and a 4K recording option would have been the icing on the cake, but even at 1080p, I will not complain about the quality of the videos and the microphone quality is also really nice. Okay, moving on, the Nothing Phone 2 now has a marginally larger 4700 mAh battery and the actual screen on time I'm getting here is around 6 to 6.5 hours, which is fairly decent. As for the charging speed, it's been upgraded from 33 to 45 watts, which now roughly takes one hour to get fully charged. But like last time, you're not getting the compatible power brick inside the box itself. So with everything that I've talked about so far, I guess I have covered everything about the Nothing Phone 2. And looking beyond the hype, I think Nothing has managed to deliver a pretty impressive semi-flagship phone that checks most boxes, including a solid build quality, a nice display, excellent performance, decent cameras, and a little bit of extra in the design. But given its price tag, I think Nothing should have definitely included better speakers here, maybe stronger IP67 or 68 ingress protection, and also a telephoto lens for portraits. These three things would have been the absolute icing on the cake, but even so, with all the bank offers and discounts that you're getting right now, it is overall a compelling option. So everybody, that was all for my full review of the Nothing Phone 2. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.